Um, and do you know how many workshops your beginner series will have? Seven. Seven. Okay. That's something that um, the admin didn't tell me. Yeah. So thank you. That's helpful. Seven. And I have like, I can pull up the curriculum if you like need that. Well, if you could send that to me really quick, that would be awesome. Yeah. It's a Google uh, doc. Okay. And I believe we're live. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Hello and welcome everybody. Um, thank you for your patience waiting while we finish up a few details. My name is Noelia. I will be your host today. And I have with me Laura, who will Hi. be teaching us some tips and tricks in watercolor. Um, <laughs> So without further ado, Laura, I'll let you tell us what we are doing today. Yeah. Okay. So um, today we, well, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo to introduce you all to this new course that we're doing, which is a beginner watercolor course uh, with a focus on landscape. So today I want to just show you um, the same landscape, and I'm going to try and do it four different ways in 30 minutes um, to just kind of show you the range of watercolor and how you can use the medium to do different things and how it's awesome. <laughs> cool. cool. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat and I will ask them to Laura. Yes. Um, remember, this is a live demonstration, so not necessarily a step-by-step -step tutorial, but you will still be able to get insights on Laura. And this is actually a demonstration for a larger beginner series in watercolor, correct? Yes, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I kind of wanted, I thought it would be a good idea to do the same thing a few times because hopefully throughout the course you'll learn how to do different things like how to paint some skies and like how to do trees and foreground and have different moods and different pieces and then at the end of the day you'll be able to do a landscape all on your own. <laughs> awesome and we will talk more about what the full intro series is as we move on. Um, so I'll let you get started but Laura I have a quick question for yes. you. Um, did you happen to close the StreamYard link? Oh, I think so. Yes. Okay. You could double check that for me. That's awesome. That's it. Thank you. Yes, I think I did. Okay. All right. So this is the reference photo. Uh, just to like have a sense of what I'm working with, but I'm going to kind of uh, change it up to do different things depending on how I feel. So I'm just going to start by like, you know, doing a really quick sketch, super... I don't know if you can even see that line I made, but I'm gonna just do that kind of four times. This is like me kind of just choosing the horizon line that I'll use in all of them. I'm not even gonna, probably not even gonna draw the trees. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that as I go. But in any case, for example, we'll do here, maybe there's gonna be a couple trees here and then maybe a tree line here. And I'm gonna show you, I think, towards the end of the course, all about how to um, use your reference photos to create thumbnail sketches and choose a composition and how to basically approach a landscape painting. So that is all part of this course, which is exciting. Okay, so I am now wetting um, the sky on this one. I think I'm gonna do I'll do the winter scene first. Um, I'm gonna mix up my colors. So this also for this demo, I'm only using three, um, three colors. I'm using Indian Throne Blue, um, Pyro Crimson and Quinacridone Gold because I wanted to kind of demonstrate the range of a limited palette and I'm a really big fan of mixing my colors. So. That's also something that you're going to learn in this course. So as you start mixing that color, what are some things you will be covering over the beginner's course? Yeah, so um, 
like, oh, this is going to test my ability to talk and paint at the same time. <laughs> um, so I'm going to, we're going to cover all the basics um, of actually how to use watercolor if, if people are beginners and don't know. So everything like how to control washes, how to um, use wet into wet, how to layer, how to glaze, um, how to have water control, um, basically just all the, you know, watercolor 101 principles. And then kind of in each class with an exercise that brings it back to the fact that we're gonna be applying all of this with landscapes. Okay. So maybe in like the glazing class, we're gonna be learning how to do trees. Um, and in the water control and value class, uh, we're gonna do a mountain gradient. Um, so all the exercises will be geared towards using them to paint landscapes. Awesome. Yeah, excited. Yeah, it is very exciting. Yeah, can't wait. Okay, so I'm just kind of blotting in a sky. I don't really like that line, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, okay, so I'm not gonna do too much to the foreground because it's snow and snow is white. I'm gonna mix up kind of a blue black using the 30 colors too much red, a little more blue. Like look at, you can get really nice, uh, like neutral tints basically just from three colors, which I think is exciting. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a light, just create some trees in the back. It's still wet, so you know, this has to do with water control and wet into wet and letting things flow, which we will also be talking about. And while that is drying, I'm gonna move on to the next one, which I think, I think I'll maybe go for the stormy one. Stormy ones are always fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to answer anybody's questions. I hope that people are excited. Yeah, um, and yeah. it seems as though our chat feature is disabled, so I am working right now. Oh, on, no. I know. I'm going, oh, no. working right now on getting it um, enabled so that we can get questions from the chat because that's the best part. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I really hope that we can do that. And if not, yeah. well... Anyways, okay, so I've mixed up this really like juicy, I don't even know, kind of purpley, purpley gray black, and that's what I'm going to use for the sky in different kind of quantities of water. I'm going to use quantities of water to um, obtain the transparency you're looking exactly. for. Exactly. Yeah, so you know, I'll be teaching you all how to. Um, use the same batch of color to create light washes like this one here versus really dark and pigmented washes like this one here. Mm -hmm. um, just by controlling the water to pigment ratio, which is what watercolor is about. And I hope to kind of make you feel confident in your ability to, to do that because it's a really great medium and maybe is a little intimidating sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm just gonna go, the good thing about stormy skies, in my opinion, is it's like, there's really no wrong way to do it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of make a mess with lots of water. I don't really care, you know, if I have some watermarks or blooms, which is when you kind of have two layers of, pigment and water colliding at, and they're at different stages in the drying process, which is mm -hmm. kind of a common pitfall of the watercolor wash um, that I will show you how to avoid. But in the case of a stormy sky, I, I don't really care. The more texture, the better. I like to use a little thing of paper towel to make my clouds 
pro tip. <laughs> Do you always keep your paper towel that small to be able to fit in the yeah. sections? For clouds, yeah. I just take a like a bigger sheet and I just rip off little bits as I need it. And that's how I like to get some of these more defined parts of the cloud within all the, the wetter edges. So mm -hmm. this is looking a little bit, I can see it too much of a line. So I'm just gonna scrub some of that out and just blot it away just to make it not look like that. <laughs> Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Can't really go wrong with the stormy sky. And then I'm gonna take uh, a dark mix of blacks again and put in the, the distant tree line. And because it's all still wet again, it's gonna kind of diffuse upwards into the sky, which will be cool. And we'll add some more layers using glazes once it's fully dry. But for now, we'll just block that in. That's gonna be a tree, it looks like a, this looks like a doll right now, but it will come together. And you know what? While it's wet, I'm going to just mix up a green quickly. So I'm using quinacridone gold, um, engine throne, and I'm going to add a touch of red just to neutralize it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, that was a lot of red, too much red. <laughs> so I'm going to add some yellow back in, and I'm just going to water that down, and I'm going to put that on the ground just to create a foreground and we will we will fix that up once it's fully dry cool all right oh my gosh my it has exploded <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm seeing it now um okay so maybe what should be next while these are still drying maybe the sunset would be a fun one to do before I do the sunset, I'm going to pre-mix my colors. I always like to do that, especially when you're just starting out. I think it's really valuable to pre-mix everything because once you've got water on the page, it can get a bit um, overwhelming to be mixing and dealing with timing and the water and stuff. So you can just, whoa, that was way too much red. <laughs> I just squeeze the red out of the tube. So it's super, um, it's super wet. So I'm just not used to, it's okay. We're just gonna make a really big batch. So I'm just using different ratios of um, the three primaries to make this black that I wanna use for the tree line in the sunset. That's a very dark color, super pigmented, very good for layering wet into wet. And then for the sunset, um, I'm going to mix up kind of a purple. Um, so you are mixing your own black because you don't want to use black from the tube? Yeah, I don't have any black paint. Um, I like to mix my own. And I think um, for this course especially, it's super valuable to learn about color mixing with a limited palette when you're just starting out so that you can really get to know the paints that you do have and how to kind of push their range so that's definitely something that I want to highlight in this course is how you can really mix any color with the right combination of a limited palette yeah yeah so then for that reason I don't like to mix, I mean, I do like to mix my, my darker neutrals. I'm just gonna actually get rid of this because it's in my way. How's the chat function doing? Still trying to figure it out. Oh um, no! <laughs> I know, I have some people from our Etcher team helping me as well <laughs> behind the scenes. So kudos to them and thank you so much to them. And hopefully we can get it started soon. In the meantime, you can all just watch me Watch me paint. Yeah, and we can it's still Sunday get morning. your we can still get your tips and tricks, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're ready to go, I think. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Wow, that really diffused in a way that I didn't expect it to, which is also just an interesting part of watercolor. Um, that you just kind of have to 
roll with sometimes, but we'll be able to, like, I thought that the trees would stick around a bit more clearly, but they, they had other plans. So. <laughs> water does what it wants to do, doesn't it? It does what it wants to do. And now my water got um, a little bit murky. So that's why it's coming out not super clear, but it's okay for the sunset. It'll be fine because this is kind of the base color that I'm happy to work with in any case, but bring lots of water. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start with the top. Sunsets, it's kind of, this is like a, a graduated type of wash where you're kind of blending two colors or three colors together, which I will mm -hmm. also show you how to do. Um, there. That'll work. I might not even touch that anymore because sometimes with watercolor, the more you fiddle with it, the harder it is it to is. work with. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I get yeah. it. <laughs> so that's why it's awesome that we're having this beginner series so that we can learn all those tips and tricks on learning how to control it when it becomes kind of uncontrollable. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> And our chat feature is back. Yay! Oh my gosh, ask all your questions. <laughs> yes, so if you have any questions for Laura, please type them in the chat and I will ask them to her because this is really your opportunity to pick at her brain. Yes, I'd love to answer your questions. But in the meantime, I'll just keep going. Yeah, I Thanks. love how you are creating those bushes. <laughs> Thank you. Just kind of tapping it in when to wet, but we're going to go back and define them because that, that doesn't, that's not working for me in the end. I was thinking that this scene was kind of like a snowy sunset scene. So that's why I'm painting the foreground kind of a purpley gray. Okay, we're going to let that, oh, okay. We're going to let that dry. We're going to let that dry, but this one is, well, it's dry enough. You can tell when things are, um, dry if you just kind of put the heel of your palm lightly on the paper if it's still cool that means that it's wet so this is a little bit cool but in the interest of this demo and time we're going to go for it <laughs> so now i'm just mixing up um, a bit more of a neutral kind of this same um color but maybe a little bit darker not too dark because I want to start to layer in some dimension in the tree. So I just, I have a pretty dry brush, which is another thing that I'm going to um, be teaching in this course is how to create texture um, and how to use kind of wet into dry washes. So that's what I am doing here. And I'm going to just, that's a little bit too much pigment. So I just tapped some off in my water and I'm just going to kind of add some dimension to this back tree line, but I want it to still appear like it's in the distance. So I don't want it to be too, too dark. And I don't want that to be happening there. Okay. I'll just add some more to this tree. Maybe I'll even keep this bush in the back blurry like that. Cause that's maybe like the farthest thing in the scene. Um, and then I'm gonna come down with really thin few marks to make the branches. And another thing that I want to try and teach in this course is how, first of all, you can do a lot with a limited palette, but you can also do a lot with a limited amount of brushes. Um, and it's just valuable to learn these things. Okay. Yeah. And we have a question in the chat. Oh, amazing. From Simone. They cool. say, hello, Laura, is it okay to use ultramarine instead of Andron Throne Blue? Yeah. Any yeah. suggestions? It definitely is. I love ultramarine. Um, you'll just find it kind of takes just some experiment, like experimentation to find the right triad of primaries that's going to mix the kind of neutral dark colors that you want. So 
I find that with pyrrole crimson and quinacridone gold, Indian Throne Blue does a better job at mixing more of like a pure, <laughs> sorry, that's my cat in the background, um, mixing more of like a pure black or more of a neutral tint. And Indian, uh, sorry, Ultramarine Blue doesn't do that exactly the same way, but if you tried it maybe with something like an Alizarin Crimson and maybe like a, like one of the cadmium colors or like a Hansa color, you might find a good way to mix those, those same neutrals. So it really just kind of has to do with some experimenting on your part, but ultramarine blue is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah. Especially with burnt sienna. Yes. That makes an excellent, an excellent gray. That's the only gray I use. Yeah. Do you mix it yourself or do you buy it in the tube? No, I mix it yeah. by using ultramarine and burnt sienna. I do too. It is a staple. I have to go get some more ultramarine and burnt sienna because those are the tubes of paints I run out the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I guess something we didn't talk about earlier when we were um, chatting about the intro series is whether or not it'll be live or if there will mm. be a recorded version. And our people in the chat are asking. Okay. Um, and I know we we will obviously have it live, right? Yes. Um, and I believe once the series is fully over with we will be able to sell a recording of it but I will double check with um my etcher team and let you officially know I think that if you are I think that that is right from what I know and then I think correct me if I'm wrong but if you sign up for the course but you can't make a class that you will get the recording a bit sooner than if you Oh, yes. Last, right? Yes, most definitely. Right. For the individual session. Yes, that yeah. is how it works. Okay. Um, but there are so many benefits of going to it live because then you can actually ask Laura questions as you're moving along. Totally. Yeah. I can give you as much personalized assistance as I can do in the class. And that's what I am excited about. Okay, so for this last one, I'm going to go for it because I have, I mean, I still have to fix up those other two, but I'm just going to go for all four. I think I can do it. And I'm going to do um, kind of like a really big wet into dry wash for this guy this time. Usually I like to do wet into wet, but since this last one I want to just have be a plain blue sky, I think I can get away with just kind of layering a big wash of paint. And just kind of lighten it at the bottom because the sky is always a little bit lighter closer to the horizon. I'm just kind of dipping my brush in the water and just lifting a bit at the bottom here. And I might get a bloom. I have a feeling I will, but that's okay. Looks really dark on screen. I'm just seeing that now. <laughs> and we'll light in a bit more. So you're just going over it again with the dry brush to absorb a little bit? Yeah. And I just, because I lifted a bunch out, I thought I, I was maybe going to get a bit of a harsh line. And I still think, see how I might have lifted it out too much. And now there's this line developing between here and here. Mm hmm. And I'm thinking that's going to create a bit of a bloom because this area is a lot more wet than this area. So that's not what I wanted to have happen, but it's okay. Sometimes that does happen and doesn't mean that you can't finish the painting. And to some degree, like having interesting kind of textural things like that, that you didn't plan for is what makes watercolor painting super exciting. So it's fun to leave those in sometimes. So I'm just gonna just create a foreground with some texture. So I'm just kind of dry brushing and scumbling super dry pigmented paint on top of um, dry paper. 
And I'm gonna put in some trees in the back with this kind of a brownie color. And we'll glaze on top of that. We'll see how much it bleeds up. Oh no, yeah, see how that, oh, I must have had um, like a splash of water when I was cleaning my brush and it just is gonna make a, gonna make a bloom. We can consider it a cloud, right, though? Exactly. Well, that's okay. That doesn't mean that I should abandon this painting, you know? It's going to yeah. be a good character. Okay, so let's return to this one now. I'm going to reinforce some of the tree line that has disappeared, and I'm just now mixing again my favorite neutral source of colors. So now that this is a nice purple, I'm going to add some yellow because... Um, yellow is the complement to purple, and that means that it will it will neutralize it. I'm gonna there's a class in this course all about uh, color theory, so we'll go over some of this. This is super dark. That's good. Okay, so I am actually gonna re-wet some of the tree line because I do want. To, oh wow, that had blue on it. <laughs> um, I do want to have it diffuse a bit. I'm just wetting around the area that I want to create the tree line and now it will bleed, but I'm using quite a, a pigmented mix so it's not gonna bleed uh, too much, just a little bit. I don't know if you can, I think you can see that. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go with the tree, same thing. This is, you know, a type of, it's kind of like wet into wet glazing, um, which is one of the things that I do a lot in my paintings. I do a lot of layering. To connect it with the trunk. How's that looking? I think we gotta make the, make the ground a bit more exciting. So I'm gonna take some purple because why not and just create a bit more interest in the foreground, maybe glaze some color on top. That just made a huge difference in depth. Oh yeah? Yes. Wow. We're not done yet. I think I'm we're gonna, oh, that's too dark. We're gonna do a bit more, but I'll come back to it. It's looking super stormy. How's this one? I think this one, uh, maybe we'll add a little bit more character just into these distant trees with a really dry brush just to get some, to scumble some texture. Mm -hmm. um, kind of with the, with the side of the brush. Anybody have any more questions? Yes. I oh, was yeah? about to <laughs> oh, okay. tell you that Ingrid is asking, what are you painting on? Um, I'm painting on an Arches watercolor block right now. Um, so it's just um, 300, oh, sorry, 100% cotton, 140 pound paper. Um, and it doesn't have to be, it can be whatever brand you, you want. I think Etcher has some really great um, paper, but for the course, I would definitely recommend um, 100% cotton is probably the most important feature of the paper. Awesome. Yeah. And all of our etcher sketchbooks actually are 100% uh, cotton paper. So if, yeah. So if you want to check them out, I'll drop the link to them in the chat. Mm -hmm. And I've also dropped the link to the beginner series so that you can sign up for it if you're ready to sign up for it. Amazing. I hope so. I'm really, uh, really looking forward to it. Okay, 
So I'm just adding some, I don't really like what happened there. So I'm gonna see if I can just blot that out. It's kind of a damp paper towel. Answer is yes. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna add any more into this foreground. I kind of just wanted to be a silhouette at sunset. So I think I might be done with this one. I think I'm done with that one. So we just have to work on these two. Do we have time for that? Yeah. Okay, sweet. And um, by the way, um, people were suggesting it could be a moon instead of a cloud. Oh, cool. For the you fourth know, one. Because it is like, it, it has ended up coming out a lot darker, mm -hmm. especially on screen. So why don't we just, let's roll with that. Let's see if we can make that into a moon. Why not? It's in a funny spot compositionally, but that's okay. Um, I mean, it's like a tiny little brush and it's just got water. And I'm going to see if I can just, I don't know, this is an experiment. This has got to roll with the punches with watercolor sometimes. So I'm going to see if I can just scrub that and kind of lift it out even more. With a wet brush, clean wet brush? Yeah, it's a clean wet brush. So I'm just going to I'm scrubbing, this is a, like a brush that I have ruined the point on a long time ago. So now I just use it for these kinds of jobs and then I'm gonna just blot it out. And there you go. There you go, yeah. So awesome. this is not the most, it's not super daylight. It's a little duskier than I meant for it to be, but cool. Okay, so if it's dusk, then let's go for some kind of cool greens for the trees in the background to just sort of emphasize that. Yeah, I kind of like the moon. Thank you for who, all of you who suggested that. Suggested, yeah. And Ramona just said it could have clouds over it. That's why it's a little fuzzy. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like where you guys, how you guys are thinking. Right, I do too. <laughs> um, another question for yeah. you. What size um, will you be painting during your um, class, your beginner series course? Hmm. Um, what, so kind of what size paper do I recommend? Or... Um, I guess, but also if you can give us a little insight into yeah. will it be full paintings? I'm assuming there will be a lot of just practicing yes a lot of practicing so I I would say that I probably won't be working on a piece of paper any bigger than eight by ten just because an eight by ten landscape is that's a for me a big painting so I think that like you said we're going to be doing a lot of exercises on whatever size sheet you have available and then in terms of the actual finished paintings I don't really plan on having them be full eight by tens. They might be smaller than that, maybe like a five by seven or even a four by six, because it's, for me, feels easier to approach a landscape when I'm a beginner, when the painting is a bit smaller. Not super small because you don't want to get uh, too bogged down in all the details, but just not so big that you're now dealing with timing of huge washes and um, dry time and things like that. It just gets gets to be a lot. So a nice, happy medium. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. They're all becoming kind of moody, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm gonna add my trunk. Kind of like a, an apple, I don't know, apple tree maybe. And I think for this one, I might even take um, a dry small brush. And I'm just going to take kind of a lot of the like real straight from the tube red pigment. And I might add in um, some flowers in the foreground because these little white dots here that I, that are texture of the dry brushing kind of remind me of little white flowers. So maybe I'll add some little red ones around them. And before I go too crazy doing that, I'm going to take a bit more of a light green. And just kind of 
do a bit more on the ground. Okay, so some flowers and this one is done, I would say. Yay. I mean, you could spend a lot of time putting in flowers, so. Right. <laughs> I'm not gonna get too, uh, too excited about that. So we'll return to this one. I think this is the only one that needs some help still. The sky on that one though looks so, so interesting. I, this, I guess it's, you know, because of timing, I'm not letting the layers dry fully. Like it's still pretty cold to the touch. So it's still pretty wet. And it just keeps, it just looks like it's continuing to diffuse. And yeah, I almost don't, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of like what's happening here, even though my intention was to do something a bit more um, concrete like this, but you gotta go with the flow with watercolor a lot of the time. So I actually think I'm gonna try not to touch that and maybe maybe put, um, maybe put trees in a bit of a different arrangement in the foreground to make some space for what's happening in the back because it's pretty cool. The only thing with mixing your own neutrals is you do spend a lot of time getting the ratio right, but you learn a lot when you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you learn a lot about color mixing in general. Yeah, and color theory, I would say. And do you find that it makes your paintings more harmonious when you mix your own? Um. Yeah, for sure. Well, it's not so much has, it doesn't so much have to do, I think, with the fact that you're mixing your own, more so that if you choose a limited palette and you stick to it, then kind of by default, it's going to be more harmonious because it's just only three pigments that you're dealing with and all their different combinations, right? Mm -hmm. So I do, it, it, it works for that reason. And I like that. I don't know, this is some sort of bush some sort of bush in the foreground. And I think in the, in the um, other one I had done, which I liked, I had put in a little fence. So I'm gonna go for a fence. So I'm taking that tiny little brush again, and I'm just getting a lot of dark pigment on it. I'm just gonna put in some posts. and sort of connect them irregularly. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Awesome. So we have about five-ish minutes left. Okay. Um, if you still have burning questions, type them in your chat now. This is your opportunity. Yes. <laughs> so that we can ask them before we wrap up um, and I'm going to drop in the chat our feedback survey so that you can let us know how much you enjoyed and what you thought about this live demo yes. um, and I will also be dropping the link for the beginners course with Laura coming yes. up I hope you guys some of you sign up and yeah, please ask any questions that you have. I'm happy to answer. Yeah. So do you feel like you're done with your four? Yeah. I, I think so. I mean, yeah, if I wanted to, they're kind of almost like thumbnail paintings because they're so small. They're probably like two by or three by three. So yeah, if I wanted to then take one of these and kind of develop it into a full painting, I'm sure there's a lot more I could do, but for this sort of thumbnail, checking out composition, checking out, you know, colors and how you can just take something like this and get creative and think of different times of day and different arrangements of the trees. Yeah, I think I've done what I wanted to do. Awesome. Yeah. So is it time for untaping? Oh, that's okay. Take the, take the tape off, take the tape off. And I can <laughs> hear a little chant in my brain. Oh my gosh, take yeah, okay, hold off. on. I have it really elaborately taped. Uh, <laughs> oh, behind. 
Yeah, so I wasn't all hanging out. So this might not be the most uh, seamless transition. <laughs> hey, it's okay. Um, I'll take this time to um, apologize for the struggles with the chat at the very, very beginning. Um, that's my bad. So thank you all for your patience and for always joining us. We really appreciate you all who are part of our Llama family. If you have followed along, don't forget to tag us with the hashtag at your studio. And that way we will be able to see your paintings. And we also have a Facebook community um, where you can post your paintings and you can actually get record um, feedback from our artists as well. Oh, cool. So I'll be dropping, um, make sure you find us on Facebook too. Yeah. There we go. I told you this wasn't gonna be a very- <laughs> Hey, it's still painless. so satisfying to watch the tape. Uh, tonight, I feel so. like it could have been even more satisfying if I had not, you know, taped. Okay, hold on. This last tape, I will, it'll be, it'll be better. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Uh, they look amazing. I love these little studies because you learn so much from them. Yeah, totally. And it's a it's a good an important part of landscape painting, I think, is to test things out in thumbnails and see what you can do with yeah. reference. Yeah. Awesome. I will switch it back to our grid view so that people can see you a little bit. All right. Awesome. Um, people are saying great to demo. They loved it. Oh, Thank you. you. <laughs> it was interesting. So I'm so happy you were able to join us. So happy all of you joined us today. Um, don't forget to sign up for the upcoming beginners course, all on watercolor and specifically landscapes and watercolor. Um, Sarah gave you, Sarah, sorry, Laura gave you some tips and tricks and a little insight into what you will be learning, but you will really get the full on explanation on how to's during the course, right? Exactly. Yeah. It'll be very in depth. Awesome. Anything else before we end, Laura? No, I mean, yeah, if you end up having is like if anybody ends up coming up with more questions and, and they want to reach out, they're more than welcome to. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have an Instagram account? Yes, I do. It's um art by L K E L L E K A Y. So Art a, by L K. Yeah. So if there's anything that you think of, just send me a message. <laughs> awesome. Thank yeah. you. Thank you all who participated and we will see you in the next live demo and hopefully in Laura's course. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.